yeah, we are Yokoza. Yokoza is an art collective formed by four people. Me, Davide, then Matteo, Paolo and Filippo. And we, live to, we work together since uh, 2006. And we are based in Italy, Germany and uh, the UK. Oh, uh, we are, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's the second slide that starts like that. Uh, we are particularly interested in the promises of new technologies, the ideologies behind these promises, what can be achieved with these technologies, but also why they so often disappoint. In the next 30 minutes, I will introduce you two projects. The one is the NoTube contest, the contest for the most valueless video on YouTube. And the second project is called In Time of Peace. And it's about the life of a drone after war and terror. But let's start with the first project, the NoTube contest that uh, this year will take place in Switzerland, as you can see from the slide. And uh, the winner of the NoTube contest is the participant uh, who, managed the who managed to find the most valueless video on YouTube. A video uploaded on YouTube is generally oriented to have a large audience as a simple narrative and can be easily categorized. A YouTube video instead fails in every promise and contradicts every viewer's expectation for a meaningful experience. And these are the videos in which we are interested. A good YouTube video cannot be summarized does not offer any keyword, is not linked everywhere, has not been discussed, and there is no need to discuss it. So, um, a good NoTube video has to, can be defined as valueless if it matches these uh, three, three criteria. No reason to make it, no reason to watch it, and no reason to publish it. Um, YouTube has plenty of fun videos, viral videos, commercial videos, videos that, that are expected to be watched to reach millions of viewers and that sometimes succeed in this. However, for each video that reach one million viewers, there, there is probably one million videos with no views or, or with very few views. And these are the videos we are curious about. And these NoTube videos are also, uh, in fact, extremely difficult to find, as they usually do not have any keywords, tag, or content to be searched. Also, the submission for the NoTube contest open today, you can simply uh, post uh, a video uh, using this uh, hashtag to participate to the contest. And, oh, also, the prim, the, the, um, the winner of the Nobel contest will have a ticket to eat in a, in a, in a restaurant in front of the Google um, office in uh, Switzerland, in Zurich. So, um, YouTube. YouTube, uh, the slogan of YouTube is broadcast yourself. But is there always an audience? Should be there an audience? It, YouTube made quite a big promise. Um, that every video with this service, I mean, it's, it's quite impenitive. It's the promise that every video you upload will be saved, and, it is, and this video is potentially accessible by anyone. YouTube Archive uh, is potentially unlimited and grows constantly. However, how much of what is saved makes sense and can be considered to be valuable? We are mostly interested in how this video that have no evident value can be found, collected, and curated. The YouTube, the NoTube contest is, how, is uh, our way, first of all, involving people in taking time to pay attention to these videos. They're mot they're, most of the time, they are boring, but take time to, to watch it. Also, it's our way to take care of these videos. Uh, but let's have a look to some of these videos so that we can understand uh, what are we talking about exactly. I promise you that they will be not too boring. 
So, well, okay, now let's move it here. Oh, wait. Uh, in this video, you will see also some winner of the previous edition of the NoTube contest. That's the winner of the 2011 edition. This one was really a good winner. This was a runner-up. This is also very interesting. I mean, it's a shoe. It works. You can also break it. Oh, that's it's too long. Uh, basically, it's a woman talking with his mother in the room. It's really too long. It's too boring, also for for me. <laughs> Yeah, that was a, a runner-up of the two, 2009 edition. Uh, we, we are almost done and do not uh, be worried about it. And here we have, uh, oh, that's Too Late Night in Tel Aviv, the winner of the 2010 edition. And you can see that it's clearly the, the winner. Yeah, and that's the winner of 2009. And that was, and I think it was also enough, probably. <laughs> So, in our work, we are generally interested in the boundaries between failure and success, the promises of new technologies and the disappointment these often generate. But more than that, we are interested in what could happen after this failure. Regarding NoTube, even if the promise of uh, broadcasting, the promise of YouTube of uh, broadcasting yourself is often disappointing, disappointed, this does not mean that YouTube is a failure. Instead, we are curious about the multiple forms of failure that YouTube generates and how they contradict, uh, how they contradict the, the YouTube statement while generating new form of content that no one is expected to care about this. Our main questions are how to take care of this stuff and how to imagine new stories after this, the dissatisfaction 
of the new media or of the new technologies as YouTube, but as other new technologies. Um, another project where we have been investigated in uh, such a similar as aspect is the work called In Time of Peace. Uh, in Time of Peace is a series based around drones. It's nothing new. We find drones to be particularly fascinating. They were created as, as a war technology and now also becoming more and more part of our everyday life. We are told, for example, that drones can deliver goods like these Amazon drones. They can deliver pizza. They can map the territory. They can bomb countries. And however, in all the stories we are told about drones, we mostly find drones to be used for something, to be an instrument, to kill people or to help people, but to be an instrument. I really like this picture because it, it feels like the drone is feeling like a, a butterfly, that it's really, it's, it's having fun, it's having relax. And that's our, uh, our view about this project. So in time of peace, it's uh, an attempt and imagine the life of a drone after war and terror. And also outside any instrumental perspective. Namely, we imagine how the life of a drone could be if, let, if the drone let, if is left by itself and without any, any human constriction or intervention. And our first idea was that probably, probably, the drone will try to, to keep itself fit, maybe running a race. And so we basically put uh, an app called Nike Plus upon uh, the drone, and we have monitored the activity of a drone running the 100 meter race, race by tracking its performance with a device for runner. And also we noticed that uh, the, the results of its performance were quite unpredictable and also sometimes did not finish the, the race at all. Uh, let's have a look at the video in which uh, the drone is trying to finish this 100 meter. I have it here, not here, wait. Wait a moment.
So that was, as you say, is not that easy. And uh, we also try to imagine what uh, always remaining in this context, we have collected a series of a drone taking selfies. Most toy drones come with a built-in camera that is usually used by humans for both, both for making video, video making as for surveillance purpose. We thought that drones, once liberated by humans per, human perspective, would point their camera against a mirror in this act of liberating vanity. Um, we also imagined that drones wouldn't be creative in choosing the location for their selfies, so basically imitating their owners. And what we mostly want to capture in these selfies is the banality of the life of a drone in times of peace. Uh, if a drone did not have to operate in a war scenario or be used by human being, it will probably probably do very banal and inimaginative activities, such as taking selfies. Here is a uh, snowboard shop. Here in the bathroom, as most of the selfies are. And that's uh, uh, where the, the name of our, this project came from in time of peace. It comes from a quote from a text written by Paul Virilio in 1983. It is say, logistic was defined, was defined as the procedure following which a nation's potential is transferred to its armed force in time of peace as in time of war. And this idea of merging together the development of technologies for war with those for everyday life is, is quite clear in drones, but also for video games, computers, and the internet in general. Moreover, uh, it blurs the two scenarios together to the point in which, uh, in which they are, they are really, di really difficult to, to distinguish, really difficult to separate. And so that is our final question. As with drones, can we actually imagine a life in time of peace? Thanks for your attention. So if you have questions, I can answer to your questions. Um, questions, please line up uh, at the microphones. Any questions? Well, um, let's thank Yoko Ozer, and thanks for his excellent talk. Thank you.